Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. On launch day for Warhammer The Old World Games Workshop, put on a launch event at Warhammer World in Nottingham in the UK, which is the home of Warhammer and the home of Games Workshop itself. Over the last couple of weeks, they've added more and more to the list of activities on the day, and it looked pretty exciting if you were in the area and able to make it way along. By a pure stroke of luck, myself, Dan, who's a co-host on the Hobby Hour podcast with me, and Jordan of Jordan Sorcery YouTube channel, were in Nottingham the day before to play Mordheim on the board you may well have seen on the channel. We had lots of fun playing games of Mordheim, and I'll come back to this in more detail in a future video, but we were staying in Nottingham that night anyway, which left us very nicely placed for returning the next day for the open day. So that Friday evening, as we ate our curry and we chatted and had a beer or two, we discussed our plans for when to turn up the next day. We had already chatted to some of the event staff on the Friday about the event and how they were getting on with their planning. And they, they seemed to think it might be busy, but it was really hard to tell. They'd also put out a note on their Facebook page advising people that they expect to be busy and that you may have to queue and they may have to limit the numbers in the building if it was really, really busy. So they're obviously expecting that it could get a little bit beyond what they'd normally see on a, on a Saturday launch day or something. So we were a little bit nervous about standing outside in the cold for hours and hours and hours on end. So we decided to get there early. We were up and early and breakfasted and, and arrived at Warhammer World for around 8.30 that morning. Morning. So that gave us an hour and a half to queue. As we arrived, we were probably 30th in the queue, something like that, at a quick head count. And very quickly, it filled up more. And you can see from the video here, the queue had started to grow. And before we went in, the queue had gone all the way round and out of the car park completely. And it stayed like that for hours. I will say now that the staff were absolutely fantastic the whole day. The early cures, they brought out teas and coffees to us, which was really, really nice. I'm sure that the people who ended up queuing around the corner didn't get that offered to them because that would be way beyond what they could manage. But those of us that were there before 9 o'clock were, were definitely offered hot drinks, which is really, really nice and, and, and something they didn't have to do. It was our choice to be standing out there in the cold. As we rushed through the doors, all walked relatively quickly. They managed it pretty well. Now, the cards and resin miniatures all went within the first few minutes. I grabbed the couple of things that I was missing. I was very, very lucky to do so. I was able to, to grab a couple of miniatures. And, and a couple of them that I took were the very last ones on the rack. And as I said, there were only sort of 30 or, or 40 people ahead of us in the queue. And are absolutely hundreds and hundreds behind. You can see from the images here that the queue carried on inside and this was like this throughout the day up until around one o'clock and that was all the way through the shop around the outskirts of the playing area and if you know we'll have a world you'll, you'll you'll get an idea of this and then back in the other side of the shop in order to queue up for the tills and while those cards and those resin miniatures had gone the main books and the main box sets remained available all day that I was there and I believe pretty much through the whole day as well. I'm not sure whether they did run out at the end. Those people that were there till 8 o'clock in the evening might be able to tell me. But at the point that I left, people weren't really queuing anymore. The queue was sort of located just in the shop and people were still standing there with their books and their boxes. So they were able to, to get what they wanted. Now, I do appreciate saying that it can be quite emotive for some of you out there, especially if you're nowhere near Nottingham. I'm incredibly lucky that I only live a couple of hours drive away and happen to be there that weekend. Normally, I couldn't go to Nottingham on a Saturday. It wouldn't be possible. And if you're the other side of the world, you definitely can't do that. So I, I do appreciate that. I do sympathise with that. There's been events before that I haven't been able to go to. I can think of many Horus Heresy weekenders where they've been ticketed and I've not been able to get the ticket. Tickets. Um, four years in a row tried to get tickets and couldn't get there and because of that I missed out on things as well and those were limited edition but all the things that people are still waiting on today are mainline items and, and a few little conversations I've had today I think we may even you know see reprints of the cards and things as well that's not definite but I don't think there are many things that will be truly limited so if you are still waiting for things and weren't able to buy them I think you can be confident that you'll be able to get a restock of most of the most important things. 
So aside from queuing for things from the shop, there were lots of other activities put on in the day, including a Legends of Paint competition where you could bring along Fantasy Battle miniatures, but also Age of Sigma, Warcry, Mordheim, Blood Bowl, anything with that sort of more of a, a fantasy side theme to it. And there were lots of lovely entries, some really, really high class painting, some really, really interesting conversions, and some just some really nice paint jobs and things as well. And I believe there were multiple awards giving out. I don't know if someone won Best in Show or who that was, but people could earn gold, silver or bronze pins. And Dan of the Hobby Hour podcast with me, I know he's walked away with a, a gold pin and we'll talk about that in the, the next Hobby Hour. But it's some really, really nice miniatures on show, in, including this really, really interesting conversion. This gives you an idea of some of the fun things people did. And I chatted to the owner of this and saw the rest of his army. And I, I forgive me, I didn't get your name, but I know you uh, watch the channel sometimes. I chatted to his friend as well. And he had a lovely, lovely themed army or undead army around sort of pirates and coasts and he had a hot part of a galleon on the back of a Ragnarok spider it was amazing so hopefully he will join the discord and post his pictures up in there so I can get his name and we can we can see those things and share them even more now you're not allowed to film inside Warhammer world and and while I took a few very very short sort of 10 second videos of my Mordheim game um, I, no one else was in those pictures and I wasn't filming anything that Games Workshop was putting on so I, I respected it for this open day event but as you'll see this is the reason why we've got stills rather than video for, for this part but there were lots of other things on as well aside from the painting competition there was a base exchange where you could go and roll a roulette wheel I believe and get some new size square bases for in exchange for your old ones there were staff where Working incredibly hard demoing the game all day. I don't see them stop all day demoing the game. I didn't have a go myself. That's not really much the kind of thing I like to do at events very often, but I did have a quick look and watch some other people having theirs. Nick and Cy from Battle Report were running a revamped version of Full Tilt, which looked really, really, really fun. And the little board they made looked really, really cool as well. I didn't have a chance to have a go myself. It was always really, really busy around there. But I did peer over and watch a few games and I kind of wish I had a go now. There were plenty of open tables where you could go along and have a game yourself. And there were plenty of people there that had brought armies along. Some of them had them well prepared. Some were, you know, half painted or just a couple of units. But it was nice to see people rolling dice and playing their first few games of the old world. We had three cabinets there with all of the studio armies, including the Orc army, which was announced on the day. More about that in the second half of the video. They didn't have any of the new miniatures that were shown on the video and was part of the release there for some reason. Not quite sure there was. If, or maybe they did and I, and I didn't see them. But the cabinet had a lot of the old returning miniatures as well. And I, I took a few quick pictures, but they're nearly always better to see the official ones. The Snotling Pump Wagon there and the Snotlings is something I love to get my hands on something I wish I had years ago um, but it was very nice to get close up and have a look even if it doesn't show you very very well in pictures through glass here and reflections of me and, and people behind but I love seeing the official studio miniatures when you get the opportunity to at Warhammer World. These two are super cool along with things like the the pump wagon and the snotlings these are extra cool and very, very nostalgic for, for me and probably other people of, of, of my ilk or age. In particular, the Marauder Giant. Uh, I've wanted to own him for years. I go for an awful lot on eBay. I never had him as a kid. So I really want to grab myself one of these when they become available. I think they're going to be on made to order. But we'll discuss that a little bit later on. But I'll be grabbing one, probably as a unit filler in an Empire Army rather than Orcs and Goblins. But so cool to see it back. Obviously, I did take pictures and, and things as well of all the Bretonians in their cabinet. And I'd, I'd seen them recently. Anyway, they were in the shop, or at least some of them were. But there's probably not an awful lot of point in me spending a lot of time talking about them here. They've been well covered, and you can see better pictures of them on the, the store and all those kind of things. But like I've already mentioned, it's very, very cool to see them, especially some of the repainted and rebased or touched up older miniatures. They weren't all available last time I was here to look at. And it's the same with the Tomb Kings as well. Very, very nice to see them in person. My grainy potato cam pictures through glass don't really do them justice. But if you do get a chance to head over to, to Warhammer World at any point, um, yeah, hopefully these guys will be behind the cabinets in the museum in the future. And I'm sure they will be when they're not out on campaign and being used for, to, for filming or for, for photography. 
trophy. And it's just so cool to see them in the flesh. The guys from Mini Wargaming were there as well. There's Luca doing some filming in the back. And the mountain was behind me talking to someone. I watched the game for a little bit. It looks like a massive game with loads going on. It looks like loads of fun. Again, it's not something I took part in. Um, but it's very, very nice to see them there. And it's nice to see Games Workshop doing a, a partnership with with a, a third-party content creator. And you can see Mini Wargaming's logos on that banner there as well. And that's, that's, a, that's a sign of things changing, I think. And maybe not the star of the show for everyone, but for me, this was absolutely fantastic. And I'm pretty sure this is going to find its way into the, the exhibition. I hope they don't replace Volganov with it. I hope that this is an additional thing. But there is so many cool things there. So I, I can't imagine they're going to put it away in a cupboard. Uh, I think they're closing the Warhammer World exhibition room number one um, next week or later this month for, for a few days. So I'm going to assume it's to have a bit of a reorganise and maybe squeeze this in there. But take a trip to, to Warhammer World. This is going to be on display somewhere and, and go and have a look if you can because um, it is really, really cool to see. And they're, they're so good at doing these things. There's so many cool things to see in the museum, regardless of, of what game systems you play. All of the displays are, are really, really, really cool. And there's just so many cool little tidbits on, on this one. The, the way all of the... Uh, the, the, the cavalry, the Knights of the Realm are charging. It looks like a real cavalry charge. They're really, really bunched up. So you get a real feel of, of movement there. And then round the back of the castle, you've got tomb scorpions burrowing up um, underneath the castle. And they've got arrows stuck in them when they've been shot and things. It's just so many cool little bits like that. I'd love to spend hours when there wasn't a barrier around it and, and walk around and see how many little cool things I could spot because they're just brilliant. It must have taken an incredible amount of time. And before anyone says, is that castle going to be available to buy? Um, I was informed that it's all scratch built out of, out of blue foam. So it must have taken them an incredibly long time to do. But absolutely fantastic. Loved it. Spent quite a lot of time looking at it and went back quite a few more times to, to have another look and take a few meal pictures as well. So there were some things I didn't take part in or, or even go and have a look at. In a, in a separate room, you could go and take part in a hobby challenge, which is basically like a scrap demon if you've been to a Warhammer Fest before, where you, you know, have access to loads of bits and you can and build and paint your own thing, whether it be a diorama or a model or a kit bash or something like that. Always always good fun, and, and but it's just not something I, I wanted to do on the day. I wanted to spend the day meeting people and talking to people I hadn't, hadn't seen for a while. I've had a lot of nice conversations with, with people yesterday, and that's what I went for. Some people go for different things. You could uh, you could paint a Knight of the Realm on foot, and that was something I was quite tempted to do because those are the miniatures I'm most excited about. But again, I didn't really want to paint it there, and I thought it'd be a little bit cheeky to go and ask just for a miniature to take away. That wasn't what it was there for. The idea is you'd, you'd sit and, and paint it there, just like when you go into a Games Workshop store and you can paint a Space Marine or a Stormcast. This was the old world version of that, and I didn't want to be too cheeky, and I'll, I'll wait until I can purchase one. But you never know, you might see a few of those appearing on the interwebs i imagine as people take them home overall though i think a really really fantastic day the staff were brilliant working really hard all day there was plenty of stuff to do and see the only thing you you, you changed probably was the queuing to pay for stuff but you know that's a hindsight thing they didn't know it was quite going to be as busy as it was or at least with people shopping and not just turning up to do other things you can argue whether they should have seen that or not i don't you know that's 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 up to other people to say but the guys were all working really really hard and all they could have done different would have been in a slightly different layout with a, a bank of specialist tills pot on just to deal with the event kind of thing and you only tend to see those uh, events away from from games workshops store anyway so that would be the only thing they could they could change the rest of it was really really good obviously we'd love access to the to the writers and the people in the in the studio and, and things like they used to do at open days we know that's not a thing anymore um, you know so games virtual corporate if you're listening please you know look at changing that policy because that's something that people look forward to but aside from that an awesome day loved hanging out chatting with people and love seeing how popular um, the game looks like it, it, it could be. There's so many people there. There's so much interest. And I think that be, might be a, a real good sort of wake up to anyone that at Games Workshop who was concerned that this game couldn't be a success. I know the team behind it are all really, really pumped for it. Um, but the you know if there's a management side that were concerned, I think enough people are interested. Um, get behind the game, and I'm pretty sure that all the restocks will happen soon. Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Baron of Dice, premium wargaming dice. 
Over 500 styles, over 4,000 customer reviews. Welcome to the best dice on the planet. Now, aside from the open day, it was also announcement day for the next faction, which is Orcs and Goblin Tribes. And our phones pinged and that, that news went live on Warhammer Community, I believe, as we were walking through the door at 10 o'clock. So I, I didn't focus on it straight away because the focus was get past the queues, try and buy those couple of things I missed out on online and then chatting to people. But we obviously caught up with it over the day. We knew the news um, and, and now it's time really to kind of head back and, and, and think about the release a little bit. And and that's what stopped this video just being a short with a few pictures of, of people at Open Day saying it was good, it was QE. I thought it'd be more fun to talk about the overall atmosphere there and the, and, the, and the feeling about the game, which is obviously very positive in that environment. And also talk about what I thought about this coming next. Real positive from it first up is they've announcing it on the launch day of the game. They're already announcing the next army, which gives us an indication that they're not going to take months and months and months and months to slowly dribble stuff out. It just feel like they're going to do it at a pace that they that they can do. So what have we got? We have an Orc and Goblin Tribes Battalion. And that's obviously not a launch box like we have for the Tomb Kings and for the Bretonians. Though the amount of plastic in it, aside from a big new gribbly monster or, or, or something to sort of lead the attack there, is very, very similar. So it's still a sizable amount of, of miniatures to get you started with your army. And of course we have an Arcane Journal to go with that, which is entirely predictable. We're obviously going to get these for each of the nine factions. And then we have some new plastic plastic miniatures as well, some new plastic characters, and and then a host of other returning plastics and metals and resins as well. The battalion box has 73 plastic miniatures in, which is two boar chariots, 31 boys, and 40 goblins with command and all that included. But of course, we've got a host of other returning plastics as well. And I quite like this badge on the images, so you know that they are returning plastics. So we have other orc boys, you have characters that are returning in plastic you have chariots so you can buy them on their own so it's obviously some of the stuff from the kit is going to be available just as regiment boxes by themselves ball boys coming back i do love those piggy models they're a little bit newer than, than some of the ranges here these are obviously from a mix of different ranges those uh, chariots are uh, definitely as probably as old as, as the bretonians if not older then you have your black orcs um, and these have been used in AOS, I believe. They've just been updated. So there's a real mix of sort of eras and things going on here. Some of the characters and things as well. So some very, very cool things. Um, and that is in fact relatively full range to start with. As I still notice there's no night goblins at this stage. We have some miniatures returning in resin as well. So these may have well have been in fine cast before that have been retooled, or maybe they would have been metal before and retooled. I'm not sure. I wasn't a big orc and goblin player apart from when I was very young. Um, but these miniatures look lovely. And if it's done in Forge World resin now, they will be handled very well. And again, they got those badges on there that clearly state they're returning resin. And then we have returning metal miniatures as well, which is interesting there for your, your 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 stone throw. I thought that would have been one that maybe made its way into metal, but very, very cool either way. And it's quite a range of different things coming back. Then we have some other returning resin classics. I believe this old Trogoth was a Forge World miniature. I think it was. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. That's coming back and that was in the cabinet looking beautiful. And then we have this um, orc war boss on Wyvern as well, which is again is another stunning classic miniature, really cool to see back. Um, and these are returning in metal, so we got old school trolls, which is quite interesting as well. And if you watch my sort of review video of the release and looking in the army books and looking in the book um, itself, the main rule book, and I, I pointed these out and said that you know very much we're looking at the older miniatures here rather than the ones that are currently available in plastic for Age of Sigmar. So there's that real sort of separation of IP, but very, very cool. You see the snotlings there at the front. All in all, I think it's really positive to see it announced so quickly um, and the miniatures that are being released is along the lines of what I expected. We're, we've got all the returning plastics. We've got some things returning in, in, in other formats, as we, we thought before, other, other materials. 
we have some made to orders um, and, and then maybe that's sensible bringing things back like the marauder giant as a made to order that becomes the official kind of ip of the game but maybe they also understand that people are going to go and buy the the newer plastic giants that now kind of live in age of sigmar and it's a way of, of of doing both things having its own identity in terms of an image that's shown to us and as a range that's shown to us but uh, and also an understanding that players are likely to go and purchase some of the ranges from the from the more modern miniatures as well so you've got the best of both worlds in some way you've got these these classics returning for us old collectors that maybe missed out on them before or sold them or want them again and you've got the options to dip into the age of sigmar ranges for for people who really want the more modern sculpts i know some people would like the whole lot redone we've talked about that in previous videos i'm, I'm not going to go through it again here that's just not what we're going to get that's what we can say really and if you don't like them there are alternative miniatures out there of course as well so yeah you can pop that in the comment about printing stuff if you want i have a 3d printer i do print stuff it's up to you it, it makes no odds either way but some people are very happy about these coming back and i'm happy to see them coming back as well it's also worth going over and looking at the full launch article on warhammer community because it lists a few other things that I maybe i've not mentioned and at the bottom of that list is the classic ogres coming back which are really cool and in a smaller print it does also say there are a few other plastics returning as well such as a, a goblin mob and the night goblin mob and, and goblin wolf riders and things as well so there's an awful lot coming or some goblins had a huge range and they probably didn't want to show all of it at once if you do see See something missing there um then don't panic i would say because i think it's all coming but all in all a fantastic weekend had i look forward to bringing the more time sort of video to you i'll talk a little bit about the game with with dan and jordan and what we did it was a really really cool thing to do as a lead up to the to the open day as well which was just nice and, and i just had such a fun time hanging out on the open day i didn't stay all day i went mid-afternoon i said about four hours or so and i know i missed a few people that after i'd gone but it was really nice to chat to quite a few old friends i've not seen for a while and and then chat to some new people as well so if you did come up and say hello thank you very much it was nice to to meet you and thank you for supporting the channel don't forget the channel has a Discord and it's a lovely friendly place to talk all things miniature wargaming and painting. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, Warhammer the Old World, but there's a lot of that on there as well at the moment, which you can, I'm sure you can imagine. So head over, that's completely free to join, obviously. But if you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon. There are currently five tiers on there. Go and have a look at the different tiers. The, the lowest is only a pound or a dollar. So that's just a way of supporting the channel. And then there are multiple tiers that add more and more stuff after that they all give you access to the, the private side of the discord was a few extra channels there it's a little bit easier to get hold of me if you have some painting questions and those kind of things um, and then the, the really high tiers give you painting tuition and coaching and things as well which is the core of what this channel mostly is about is, is painting tutorials of course, you don't have to do that, and there's no pressure at all. If you enjoyed the video, just liking it really, really helps me. Pop a comment below. That always really helps get the video seen by others as well. And thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.